Hey guys, I'm Cisco. I'm here at my studio. We have Jack here today and we're going to give him a haircut. So what I'm thinking about doing here, it's probably just keep like, since just looking at your, like your occipital bone here, we'll probably drop the fade to like meet at this point here. So you keep that weight in the, in the back. And then we just give a nice, a nice scissor trim, not necessarily like with the idea of like having the crop going forward, but just more wearability if you want to push it to the side. Cause with that crop, what it does, you get, like you leave basically all the length here and towards like the front of the parietal. So just connecting that length a little bit more in just to give you more, again, just different uh, wearability. And we'll leave the, uh, the front as well, uh, just so you can cover up your, uh, your line there. Kind of set the, uh, the base. So since the last time I was here, man, how do you think my hair has been growing back in? Is it, does doing something like the French crop affect the way the hair grows back? Do you notice? Uh, I mean, just like I mean, just like around the the like the upper uh, the front part of the parietal, mm -hmm. just because you have to leave that length so uh, so heavy, mm -hmm. not heavy, but just you leave more length there for the for the style. So does that make you approach this type of cut a little bit differently, or are you just no, it, it's there. just the, like, it's just the grow out oh, okay. from, from that cut. Gotcha. Like if you're not, if you're not wearing it styled, it looks mm -hmm. kind of weird. I have noticed through this grow out process though, that when I got that line carved into my head, the, the hard part, yeah, that's always been giving me trouble as it grows back out. Is that still kind of affecting me up there? Can you see? Uh, you had it on the last haircut, right? I did. We didn't do it here. Yeah, we, we didn't, we, yeah, we didn't do like it. a month or two before. But it was, I definitely remember that, like affecting that. And I, I still kind of noticed it even as the French crop grew out. Yeah, yeah, just because you have like the, the smaller hairs pushing up mm -hmm. or moving the, uh, the longer hairs either up or out of the way. Does that affect this type of haircut right now? No. Oh, good. It, and it's already, I mean, it's, it's grown out. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't see any like smaller hairs within the uh within the the parietal here right, that's actually one of the things that like I, I tell my guys whenever they're thinking about doing like a hard part because it does help and aid with uh party mm -hmm. it's like how often are you going to be getting your haircut if it's like once a month probably not worth it just mm -hmm. rather teach you how to part your hair correctly So the last time we started off with like the one and one half with the wall. This time I'm gonna do with my uh, with my fast feeds. Do the fade with with my fast feeds as opposed to with my walls. Just switch things up. And since we are doing a kind of like a mid drop, kind of like the angle that I want to achieve is this. So going down like to where the, uh, the occipital bone is, but still keeping this area here kind of in. So I don't mess with the length in this area here in your, at the high point there of the, the high line of your hairline, I meant. <laughs> I know I got a high hairline. The high line of the front mm -hmm. line. <laughs> this was like the my first pair of clippers when I started cutting hair. Oh really? Yeah. And I put them back, or I put them down just because they weren't getting as close as I want them to. Mm -hmm. And then obviously through the years you hear the secrets and you start messing around with your clippers and modding them and now they're one of my favorite. Oh, so that's a modded pair? Yeah, yeah. Nice. And the two here is just to like remove the, the bulk so when I go and gut it down, I can see a little bit more clearly what I'm gonna be working with.
here with my line, I want to keep the same spacing from where this two is down to this part here. And sorry about the doors being locked, man. We had a, an incident a couple weeks ago where one of the uh, the transients here in the area oh, yeah. popped in on a Monday, uh -oh. which is no one works on Mondays, really. Oh, okay. And he stole the computer that was here in the back. Okay. Yeah. You remember that one time we were shooting there at the at the studio and that one guy just popped in randomly? Oh, yeah, with all the logs? Yeah. Is it here? I will say, though, man, some of those homeless peeps, they have some, like, like good looking beards. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> I notice you do a lot of tapping with this one. Is that so it doesn't irritate the back of my neck? No, this one's uh it's just more to like not to set like a hard line mm -hmm. with these, especially when doing the transition from, from skin up. Makes it fade better. Yeah, especially with working, like right now, working with such a small area here at the bottom, mm -hmm. that's all I'm gonna be doing, just like doing taps. Now for the skin not to get irritated, I, especially, I mean, it kind of depends on client or if they come in kind of sweaty mm -hmm. and we're doing a ball fade and uh, they, didn't get, they didn't have a chance to like dry off. Um, I usually hit them with like the uh, the blow dryer and then follow up with some talcum powder mm. and that helps the uh, the shaver glide a little bit easier so you don't get that that drag. I don't know if you ever seen those I uh, think they're called like the allen blocks. Oh yeah, I actually use that. Yeah. So I've seen barbers do that where they they prep the uh, the skin that's going to be shaved mm -hmm. with the the foil shaver with the allen block. Huh. Go in and do my test with the with my thumb here. Just check my my work. Make sure everything is nice and cut. This is my my half. Still fast feeds. Fast feeds, yep. Who makes those? Uh, Oster. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't see these too often in videos. They made some like good products here and there, and they're were like the pioneers for like the detachable clipper oh, yeah. system. Harder to fade the guys here like mine with that super coarse thick hair like that. Uh, it just takes a little bit longer. It takes a little bit longer, but the the result is like always better in my opinion because oh, you have yeah. so much more density mm -hmm. to you work see with. The fade a little yeah, bit better. but it can be pretty intimidating, especially for like a, a newer barber. I would say, mm -hmm. if like they don't have like their their tools properly set up to like, especially if you're doing like a like a bald fade. Where like, if you set in like a really hard line, yeah. it's gonna be really hard for you to take it out. Oh yeah. So we're going from bald at the lowest to what's the highest part of this fade? Uh, probably like a two, two and a half, okay. and after that would be either clipper over comb or scissor over comb. Okay. To match the uh, to match the top. Awesome. All I'm doing now is just like buffing out a little like darker spots in the fade, and just using like the last or the last few. Uh, a few teeth of my uh, my clipper just to do that. Sweet. Side A done.
These are uh, Hanso's. These are six and a half. Okay. And this was my only pair of, uh, of scissor that I had. And then I recently just bought, what was it, a five and a half? Yeah, five and a half with the swivel just for like the, uh, for like beards and like for working oh, like yeah, the top. Yeah. Less, a small, a small handle yeah. or a smaller blade. Smaller blade. Yeah. And I use the, this one, the six and a half for, for here. For like actually blending the sides. I kind of held a pair of Hanzos from the first time in Philadelphia. Those things got good weight to them. Yeah, man. That's right, because uh, uh, Jake uses them, right? Like he has like those. Uh, yeah, Jake's got them. Like it was seven, Andy's. seven inch. Oh, he's got those huge ones. The huge ones, yeah. Yeah, he's demoing those. He's got his own little studio set up now. It's pretty cool. Oh, does he? Yeah. He's not with. Uh, no, he's still with them. He's just doing this side thing, too. Gotcha, gotcha. It's funny how like every barber that we worked with has like opened up their own shop now. Yeah, that's kind of like the, uh, the beer brand effect. I don't, I, no, I don't want to be like, the beer brand effect. <laughs> I don't want to say it's us. It's definitely not us. It's y'all, man. I think we're just like finding people that are already you know, blowing up. We're just breaking up that line with the point cutting. Yeah, just like those starker spots that I see between the transition between like the two to like uh, the scissor over comb. Just another way of doing things is instead of like attacking the, uh, or I wouldn't say attacking, but approaching that area with uh, thinning shears. Because mm. this is, I mean, you're looking at like a small point that you're using versus the whole shear. It's gonna blend the uh, very top of the uh, the beard here. Okay. Oh, just so it's not harsh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I should probably say that again. With that little notch there, I did that myself. Which on, one? On my beard. See how there's like a little notch cut into it on accident? Right here? Yeah. I accidentally did that myself. Jake did not do that. <laughs> I was going to say, man, I'm like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be careful. The last video I did was with Jake, and like if next, if the next video I just have like a big notch in my beard, everyone's gonna blame Jake. Try to keep your your edge up here very natural. Yeah, this is just breaking up some of the uh, the weight top. Have you seen? The uh, Tree Ranger sea salt spray. Look up just a little bit. Okay. I've always wanted to do the full eyeliner shade for a beard. I think that might be the next video. The full situation. I might have to do that next time. Never had it done before. I'm curious to see how it happens.
holy water. <laughs> so I'm going to give you the, uh, the mirror here. You can check it out. So you see kind of like the uh, the standing point of this is kind of like that drop you get here love that. in the fade to complement kind of like the uh, your occipital. I like that sort of the side too. Side you still have like the the uh, again the wearability of like moving mm -hmm. it to the side if you want to move it forward. Yeah, it's versatile. Uh, yeah, yeah. I like that push to the side like that too. There's great texture on top. It's, and it's almost kind of like a push to the side and like. Mm -hmm. And and like it still this hides that recession area, which is great. Yeah. yeah. It moves over while still not looking like a high area. Still keeping that, mm -hmm. kind of like that length here towards that uh, that yeah. corner. And it seems like it's super easy to style too. Yeah. That's great. Can I ask you one more thing? Maybe yeah. For on camera. How do you feel about evening out my eyebrows to the points? Do you want to try? You want to do? Off? Yeah. You want to yeah. do it? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Dude, I don't think I've seen that many people with like a cowlick in their in their uh, in their brow. I think I've only seen myself with this. All right, sweet. Oh, there we go. I look like a normal person now. <laughs> hey, that's not bad. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate right. you, brother. All right guys, stop. Before you watch our next video, let me tell you, our sea salt spray. This product is amazing for your hair. It gives movable texture. It's like a dry shampoo, so if you go in between days of washing your hair, it'll help your hair extend a little bit longer, and it smells absolutely amazing. Find it over at beardbrand.com.